Hello, this is Matt once again. The purpose of this video is to kind of give you a quick idea of how I run soft synths in a live situation through Ableton Live. Uh, when you start running multiple soft synths, especially with a single keyboard, things begin to get a little difficult, a little cumbersome. Uh, not only on your workflow from the keyboard and, and switching between instruments, but also on your system resources. So that's always something you want to keep an eye on. Um, so in this example, we'll use Reason as our soft synth. Um, I've got two different instruments set up in Reason through a remix, which is wired to outputs one and two, which is a default. Uh, so I've got a Hammond and a Rhodes instrument both set up here. All right, so let's take care of our setup in Ableton Live first. Um, what I did is I created an audio track and two MIDI tracks, one for each of the instruments. And then the audio track will be just as a reason audio return. You can separate the instruments into different tracks if you'd like by simply wiring the instruments directly into the hardware device in reason. So you could, you could wire the Hammond into outputs 1 and 2 and the roads into outputs 3 and 4 if you'd like and then set up the corresponding audio returns in Ableton Live. This would be nice if you wanted to mix it in Ableton or if you wanted to do some EQing or effects within Ableton. We'll keep it simple here and just have the left and right output from Reason going into Ableton Live. Alright, so to get audio from Reason you'll need to select audio from select Reason and make sure it's monitor in. So it'll be monitoring any audio coming into um, Ableton Live from Reason. All right, next we need to set up the MIDI tracks so they'll communicate um, effectively with Reason and the individual instruments in there. So MIDI from, first of all, this row here is going to cover um, your different keyboards. If you're using more than one keyboard, you'll be able to select each one of them in the MIDI from box. If you wanted to, say, on one of the tracks uh, with, say, the Hammond, you'd want to use one keyboard and the Rhodes another you'd select those two different keyboards here. So we'll just keep it at all ends since I've just got a single keyboard. You want to have monitor selected to in. So um, Ableton Live will read the MIDI messages coming in. And then you want to select the MIDI 2 to reason on both of them. And let's rename these just to make it clear. I want to rename this one Rhodes and this one Hammond. All right, so on MIDI 2 for the Rhodes track, just go down here and simply select the Rhodes patch. And on this one, the Hammond, MIDI 2 Reason, and the Hammond track. And make sure the tracks are enabled. All right, so, oh, and a quick note um, you'll want to select either a dummy track or the transport track in Reason so that any MIDI signals coming in will not be read directly by Reason, but um, they'll go through Ableton Live into Reason, just to simplify things. So now that we've got Transport selected, we should be good to go. All right, so as you hear, that was both the Hammond and the Rhodes. You may not have heard the Rhodes. It was kind of quiet. But this is nice because the way this is set up, you can disable one of the tracks, like the Hammond, and get only the Rhodes. And likewise, disable the Rhodes and get only the Hammond. Um, what's nice about this is when you disable the MIDI tracks, um, that instrument is not going to be receiving any MIDI notes and therefore won't be processing any samples or sending any samples to Ableton Live. So that's going to save your system resources. Especially when you've got multiple instruments, uh, this becomes very important. And another thing I like to do, making it easier just to control everything from the keyboard, is if you select MIDI map, you can actually map these on-off buttons to on-off switches on your uh, keyboard. Or you can put it on a slider or a fader. That'll work as well. So this is nice because then as you're playing, you can turn them on and off uh, without having to reach over to your computer and turn those tracks on or off. All right, um, that pretty much concludes everything I wanted to talk about this time. If you have any further questions or um, comments, feel free to send me an email or just drop a comment on my blog. All right, thanks for watching.